I'm going to do a little quick video on uh, spraying the Model Master acryl paints. There's really not a whole lot to the paint. Um, just a few key things to know. Um, and they will perform great for you. Uh, not really sure what the composition of these paints are. I really don't. Um, and in lieu of that, I don't think too many people do know exact composition of the Model Master Krills. They're kind of a, a uh, mysterious paint. Uh, in that regard, I will tell you personally, the best thinner for these paints are is the uh, acrylic thinner, the universal acrylic thinner. It's uh, useful on the Pactra, Flow Quill, your Model Masters, Testers, acrylic paints, and it really does do a great job. Now, this bottle might be, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight dollars, I don't know, depending on where you get it. It's well worth it. It is well worth it. You know, um, it has a lot of stuff in it that that's, enhances the paint. Uh, if you go using alcohol and all these other things, uh, these are not alcohol based paint. This ain't Tamiya paint, okay? Um, and even the Tamiya paint, which is uh, an alcohol based, the, the acrylic paint, um, or the baseline uh, acrylic paint is alcohol, and they recommend an alcohol thinner, uh, which is, I think, the yellow cap. Um, the Tamiya performs the best with a uh, lacquer thinner. And even on their website, it says on their website, for best performance and results, use their red cap lacquer thinner with their, their acrylics. So there's a tip on the Tamiya. Big difference. And Tamiya, Tamiya is awesome, awesome airbrush paint. Especially if you use their lacquer base thinner. Uh, it's just, it, the stuff is really nice. Um, every bit as good as this, if not better. Uh, the only the only drawback with Tamiya versus the Model Master Krill is the brushability of the paint. These are awesome brushing paints. Uh, Tamiya is a beast to brush. I mean, you can ask any seasoned modeler out there that uses Tamiya paints. It is not the most brush friendly paint. Um, I'm sure there's some guys out there that have figured out a means of getting the stuff to brush well, but it's at that point it's almost not worth it. You might as well just buy a good brushable type paint. But this stuff. The beauty of this and why I like it so much is because it is such a good brushable paint and a good airbrush paint, all in you know in the same same product. Um, even when you thin this to a good airbrushable um, consistency, it still uh, brushes very well. So um, that's a little bit about the paint. Um, I'm not going to recommend anything. Do not go on the internet and ask. Here's two things you don't ask. One, what do I thin my acrylics with? First of all, acrylics is a category. There are, in this day and age, versus 10, 15 years ago, there are so many different types of acrylic paints and different evolutions of paint and different qualities, varieties. It is such a broad spectrum now. They're so advanced that you cannot no longer ask, what do you thin your acrylics with? And people come up with, you know, Windex and glycerin mixed with this and that. Uh, that just doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, forget that advice. Forget it, because every paint is, is, is different. All your, and they keep coming out with even more modern versions. You know, the Mr. Hobby, um, which are excellent acrylic paints, are an acrylic lacquer. You know, you've got acrylic enamels. You've got acrylic resin-based acrylics. You've got, you know, stuff like Createx and Auto Air and... The Model Masters, to me, uh, I mean, they're all so different, You can that's no longer a valid question. Another one would be, what do you thin your blah 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 acrylics with? What do you thin your Model Master acrylics with? How What ratio? What do you thin this and that with? Uh, that's almost not no longer a valid question to ask because all paints, they do vary even within the same brand. The variation of the thickness of the paint, the amount of pigment in the paint, are you spraying a transparent, gloss, you know, something like this, which is a flat back black, which is full of pigment. Um, what airbrush are you using? What pressure are you spraying? What size needle are you using? What are you spraying? I mean, there's so many variables that the only way to truly figure out what works for you is to experiment. Take the advice with a grain of salt, use it as a guideline, get away from the concoction thinners, I mean, don't be a tightwad and go out and spend two or three dollars on a bottle of paint and buy several paints 
and then skimp on not buying the thinner for that paint. That will be your best starting point. Now once you've mastered this and the thinness and you're getting spraying and you're getting good at it and you're kind of realizing what that ratio that works for you and your airbrush, then start experimenting with other you know concoctions and, and you know that people are recommending and you know 50% this and Windex and alcohol and you know it's got to be 96% alcohol and then maybe two drops of glycerin and this you know forget all of that get away from that airbrushing is supposed to be easy and fun you know stick with the th buy the bottle of thinner with the paint that you're wanting to try and go from there then experiment so that would be my first number one recommendation with any paint any paint use the thinner that is designed for that paint it does make a difference this stuff has flow aid in it it has um, um, it has material in it that doesn't break acrylic paint that's a big problem with acrylic paints you can break the paint if you're thinning it with the wrong stuff too much too much of anything too much water you're not adding binder back to the paint you're spreading the binder to the point of where it's no longer going to bind it's going to run and become a, a wet gooey mess stick with this yeah i'm preaching but it's it's you know why make it hard on yourself but anyway the big thing let's talk about model master the big thing about the model masters is one they're not all the same there's a lot of variation between colors between batches between how old your paint is this stuff does thicken and you'll get a bottle and open it and it's just good and thin and runny and sprayable you'll open the next bottle and it's like syrup you cannot stick with a ratio you can't ask somebody when it comes to these paints what ratio do you thin it even if you're using the right thinner nobody can tell you what ratio to thin these paints because it varies that's the big key it varies okay I mean you want something the consistency of a people a lot of people say milk I would say a little bit thicker if you can get away with it now again it depends on your needle if you are the finer the needle the thinner you're gonna have to to spray that paint you know um, I use for general coverage I use a larger needle I try to thin it as little as possible and I'll just keep adding thinner to the cup or the bottle until it's spraying smooth once it's spraying smooth you're ready to go uh, if you're trying to do really fine detail or in the case of say like military modelers who those guys spray a lot of you know very thin light layers filters things like that that's totally different from trying to get just overall coverage on a part say like on an automotive model or a you know a 747 model or something like that that you're doing that you're trying to get just general coverage you're gonna thin it differently and spray it differently and probably use a different needle and a different technique a different PSI dependent on the results that you're wanting to get so forget asking questions on the internet in, in just in general forums and things because you're gonna get every kind of answer you're gonna get a lot of wrong answers you're gonna you you're liable to get steered in the wrong direction you're gonna get frustrated and you're gonna go buy a can of paint and just quit with the airbrush I've been there, done that, and a lot of us have. The best way is to find out for yourself. Okay? Number two, most important thing about Model Master acrylics is mixing it. These paints settle very easily, and as I said, they thicken and very easily. And I don't care how much you stir this paint, how much you shake this paint, it does not thoroughly mix this paint well enough to perform, adhere, and dry and cure like it should. Especially if it's gotten a little thick on you and you're having to add thinner, you've got to get one of these. This is almost, in my opinion, this is a mandatory component along with this for spraying Model Master Acryl paint. All right? Small price to pay. This is like eight bucks. You can buy these in the dollar stores for a few dollars. Almost the exact same thing. It's called a, a drink mixer. The only difference is the tip will be a little different and it'll have a little spring on it to make it whip. Uh, you want to take that spring off if you get one of those because you don't want to whip air into your paint. It's not gonna it's gonna obviously it's not gonna spray properly. So take the spring off if you go and get, you know, if you're lucky enough to find it at one of your dollar store type places, um, a drink mixer that's battery powered with the stem and the tip. 
take the spring off. Okay, you don't want to whip this stuff into a uh, you know a froth and stir it up. I mean, I stir every time I open a bottle, even if I just use it a few days before, I stir it up. You know, and some paints you're gonna have to stir more. Uh, have yourself a um, container of water of which I left in the kitchen. I'll be right back. Hold on one second. All right. Get you just a jar of water. Mix the paint. Put it down in here. Turn it on after you put it in the jar. Um, and it's clean. Your paint's ready to go. Uh, you may have to thin it. Uh, you know, look at the consistency. See what you got. Uh, you check the toothpick. As you can see, that's that's fairly thin. I mean, it's not a, you know, not syrupy. Just about right. I picked uh, this uh, flat black uh, on purpose because it's a good uh, high pigment paint. Uh, today I'm going to use my little oat propel with cap. Very simple. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't have to show a specific airbrush and pressures. That's not what is important. What is important is getting the getting it mixed right. Thinned if it needs it. And spraying it, you know. So, looks like I got some paint on the side. No editing here. It's showing real life how fast it's uh, this goes. All right, so I got the paint out. I've mixed the paint. Uh, just so happens that this propel setup uses the same cap as the Model Master. This is really handy if you, you're in the middle of building a model, you find a couple parts you need to paint, you don't feel like dragging your airbrush out and going through all that, uh, but you don't want to brush them, you want a nice finish, get you one of these. Man, it's awesome. I use it all the time. And it lasts a long time. All right, and then do some practice spraying before you spray on the model. I mean, don't go directly to your model now and start spraying. Practice. This is a piece of uh, just some old, you know, you can get these at Walmart for sale signs, garage sale, whatever. You wear a dog, you know, for less than a dollar, you can get a whole sheet. It's a realistic surface as a model. Uh, paper and cardboard is great for practicing your technique, but it is not good for testing your consistency of your paint and your spray and your pressure. It's absorbent and it will fool you into thinking you're ready and you're not. And there you go. I'd say, I'm just gauging that this is probably spraying at about 15 to 20. The bottle is, is fairly low. It's probably spraying around 50 to 20, uh, 15 to 20 PSI. Um, and there you go. No runs. Nothing. Um, that's all there is to it. I mean, it's not much to it. It's, it's very easy. Uh, I think a lot of people get messed up about these paints um, by asking for advice and and taking that advice literally. You know, somebody saying, oh, you got to mix it two to one, three to one, mix this, you know, don't, you know, that doesn't really concern your specific situation necessarily. You've got to do it on your own. You've got to practice. Get you plenty of these, bunch of these signs, spray, practice. You'll you'll see very quickly what kind of thickness area zone. It don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little on the thick side, a little on the thin side, and still spray just fine. Um, and that's all there is to it. Um, maybe it sounds simple to me, just because I've been spraying them a while. Uh, it's very perplexing to others. I mean, if you're learning to airbrush and you're getting used to the airbrush, you're gonna, it's going to take some time. But just don't get frustrated. Don't over-thin the paint. My, my advice on that would be to under-thin the paint as, best, as much as you can. 
and slowly, gradually start to keep thinning it. If it's still not spraying the way you want, make sure you have the right tip for what you're trying to do. You don't want a super fine tip needle and trying to spray a car body. Um, you're going to be putting on so much paint and in such an uneven pattern, it's going to look terrible. You know, you've got to choose the right uh, tools. You know, you've got to have a, a good sized needle. You know, I'd go with the largest needle if I'm spraying a car. When you're spraying out of that airbrush, it should be spraying like a paint can, not in a tiny line. So, um, there's just so, there, there's a lot to it, but it's very simple. Once you get the hang of it, you will never turn back. You know, I still use cans for a lot of things, for all my primers, uh, even my base colors and things like that a lot of times. And I'll just use the airbrush for graphics and small parts and things like that. But it's very easy. It really is. It's not hard at all. And these paints, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you. This, is, this has been, I pre-thinned this a little bit uh, before I sprayed it. I'm going to grab a brush. Okay, I'm going to dip it down in there and just show you, just, just kind of scrumble this around. I mean, just how smooth and, you know, I mean, it just, it just brushes really smooth. You know, it might take a couple coats to brush apart. You don't want to put too much paint on. You don't want to glop it on. Uh, but it just brushes so smooth and nice and levels out. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the beauty of the Model Masters. They are so versatile. Um, got a little spitting here and there from where I was mixing the, the paint. And, uh, of course, this ain't the best sprayer in the world, the most finest atomizing sprayer. But just to give an example, that's, uh, you know, once that dries, that's a pretty nice finish. Uh, and that's it. Um, once you do that, use any acrylic uh, thinner to clean your airbrush. Uh, you can, my personal preference with Model Masters is using a lacquer thinner to clean the airbrush because the, um, these paints, if they dry in the cup, they become almost a skin that water won't penetrate. Uh, so you have to be careful. Just water isn't enough. Or Windex, I, I highly recommend not using Windex to clean your airbrush. Uh, the reason being that ammonia attacks chrome, and over time that will attack the insides of your airbrush, the chrome, the plated parts. I've got airbrushes to show you that look just terrible. Why? Because I was using Windex all the time to clean them and wipe them and spray through them and it was even soaking them in a little. And that's the worst thing you can use is an ammonia-based cleaner. No paint manufacturer recommends an ammonia based cleaner to clean your airbrush and I know a lot of people do and it works but it is really not the best product stick with airbrush cleaners lacquer thinners things that airbrushers are made to take okay don't skimp and uh, that's it am I preaching yeah a little bit um, because there's so much misinformation out there it puts sends people in the wrong direction a lot of times they become frustrated, and it's not that hard. It's not that hard. It's simple. Um, it's just a matter of taking your time, practicing, mix paints, kind of get the, uh, the feel of it, and realize that with the Model Masters, you're going to thin on each bottle just a little bit differently. They're, I mean, they range from almost milk thin to thick as soup, you know, syrup. Uh, there is no set ratio. There is no set pressure. Depends on the airbrush. You know, it depends on what you're spraying, how big a coverage you want. And only you can actually refine and find what works for you the best. Remember, practice on plastic, not on paper. You know, practice on a surface that's not porous or absorbent. Um, it's gonna, you're gonna get a total different result. You know, you need to practice on something that mimics what you're going to be spraying, which is a solid plastic surface. Uh, and another thing I would recommend highly with any acrylic paint, or almost any acrylic paint, is to prime. Uh, prime the surface. Because acrylic paints in general, not all, but in general, acrylic paints do not have a solvent base, or a very strong one, that bites into plastic. 
you know, some of your acrylic paints like the Createx, they have absolutely no bite whatsoever. And they dry by just simple evaporation of moisture. Whereas a solvent-based paint bites into the part and dries very rapidly from the evaporation of that solvent, that lacquer or whatever's in the paint. So you can't overdo it and overspray and, and you know, keep laying on the acrylic and expect it to dry, you know, like another paint or to grab. So you need that primer for it to, to, to bind just that much better. And I would recommend a primer with any acrylic paint, just about any paint. Uh, it's not necessary these days with all of them. That's why they've developed lacquer, uh, acrylic lacquers, and that can be sprayed directly on plastic and will bite into the plastic. But most of your paints, your acrylics, uh, really greatly benefit from a primer base. Plus, that brings out the flaws. It helps you. It just helps you do a better model when you prime it. You know, you can see flaws. It brings them out. It leaves you a good uh, surface to polish and fill. And then you hit it with your acrylic, and you've got a beautiful paint job. Uh, that's it. Off the cuff, uncut, preachy, everything. But not directed at any one person. I mean, I've had a million questions about acrylic paints. And I've asked a million questions about them as well when I was learning. And uh, so I'm just trying to be to the point um, and, and just say, look, it's, it's up to you, pretty much. Um, you've got to practice on your own and learn these paints. Uh, I had to do the same. And uh, once I kind of got the hang of it, of thinning the paint, it was pretty easy from that point. But you know what? I never experimented with a bunch of concoctions. I did try that in the past. It didn't work. I always had some problem that occurred from using that stuff. Use the thinner for the paint. If you're going to spend the money on the paint, buy the thinner. If you're going to wear shoes, buy some socks. Don't make them, okay? Buy some socks. Don't be a cheapskate. Talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.